Hello and welcome to The Doc Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Mike DeLuke, and it's my mission to help you lead a happier, healthier, and more prosperous life, both personally and professionally. Hello and welcome to this episode of The Doc Podcast. As many of you know, it is my goal with The Doc Podcast to find interesting guests that will offer advice and suggestions to help you succeed both personally and professionally. And that's exactly why I am super excited to bring you today's guest, Dr. Mike Neal. Mike is a practicing optometrist who practices alongside his wife, Dr. Amy Neal, in Hawley, Pennsylvania, in their very successful practice, Lakeside Vision. Mike and Amy, like any of us who have run a business, faced many challenges in the hiring process as part of running their practice. They developed algorithms that improved their success rate and realized that they could actually share this information to help their medical and dental colleagues. So in 2018, they launched a new company called Build My Team, which is a hiring service that provides highly qualified job candidates for medical and dental practices. Since that time, Build My Team has experienced a great deal of growth and they've continued to hone their strategies to this day. Today, Mike and I are going to talk about all things hiring, including many of the challenges and pitfalls associated with the traditional hiring process, as well as how Build My Team as a platform can address many of the recruitment and retention issues we all face. But before we begin, I do want to make it clear that I do not have any financial arrangement with Dr. Mike or Build My Team. I just love what they're offering. I think it's a really unique and awesome approach to the hiring process. I personally know how challenging that process can be from all my years running my practice, and I want to share that with the Doc Podcast audience. Plus, we're both Dr. Mike's, so that makes it kind of fun as well. <laughs> uh, but with that, I want to welcome uh, my guest for today, Dr. Mike Neal. Welcome, Mike. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Mike. Excited to be here. Really happy to have you and uh, really looking forward to this. Um, this is, you know, as I said, I, my goal with this platform is um, not to just sit and talk about teeth, not that, that we don't talk about teeth sometimes, but people might see this and say, why does he have an optometrist on? Um, and, and they're not talking really about vision either. So um, it's, it's just so interesting how there's so many parallels. And as we had spoken prior to this and connecting with one another, there's just, there are a lot of parallels. We, in any medical dental practice, especially those that are run in a private practice setting, we're facing the, the same challenges uh, when it comes to hiring. And I'm yeah. really impressed with the solution that you and your wife have developed. Well, thanks, Mike. Um, yeah. So an optometrist talking to a, a room full of dentists, what the heck's going on <laughs> here, right? Um, and as you mentioned, private practices in North America are all virtually the same. Um, what I mean by that is we all have similar staff positions, a front desk, a, a way to get paid, let's say a, a biller. Mm -hmm. um, you've got technicians or you know dental assistants, hygienists, all those types of different positions mm -hmm. are very similar one type of practice to another. Um, eye care might have opticians that help with the glasses. Dentists uh, will have uh, um, you know hygienists, but the rest of the practice uh, outside of those specialty positions are virtually identical. Mm -hmm. And from a candidate standpoint, applying to the different types of practices, they are identical. Mm -hmm. They're not making distinctions between eye care, chiro, dental, medical, uh, any of those types of things. Yeah, that's that's the interesting thing about it is we kind of we yeah. think about it in terms of our own profession so often um, we don't realize there yeah. there's there's so many parallels and we're all fighting this battle which is great if we can pool our resources and our ideas as as you and your wife have to not just help people in optometry but in all in all the medical uh, space so and dental space exactly tell me a little bit about your journey just overall a little about your family background and how you even got into optometry before we dive deeper into the the in depth content. Yeah, sure. Uh, so way back in the day, uh, May of 2000 is when I graduated optometry school, okay. uh, went to school in Philly and ended up moving to the, uh, the Pocono mountains in rural Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife started a practice. Uh, she from day one had hiring issues. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, that, that extrapolated all the way through to just the, you know, the same revolving door that so many of your listeners, um, have had yes. the proverbial merry-go-round. I mean, pick your metaphor. It, it, it's been nuts yep. uh, with regards to that. And if anything, it's getting harder um, to do this by yourself. Yep. So back in 2017, 2018, uh, I was in executive coaching for uh, not, nothing to do with healthcare, but a, a program called Strategic Coach and okay. uh, some, another mastermind as well. 
Um, and what that showed me is that um, a lot of these folks in these these groups, mm -hmm. they weren't having hiring problems. Mm -hmm. And I did a, a really deep dive into how a couple of these companies were hiring. Were these bigger um, companies or, or small businesses? Some or of them were, some of them weren't. Uh, but you were talking about like Disney and oh, wow. okay. uh, Four Seasons, the... Uh, the magnificent, by the way, if you've never had a chance to uh, vacation or stay at the Four Seasons, you have to try it. It will change your perception of what customer service is like. Mm -hmm. um, I would argue that's a solid uh, deduction, a tax deduction, yeah, right. because you're going <laughs> to come back and you're going to make changes to your practice, but you know, not financial advice. Um, right. So I was taking a look at how these companies were doing it. And I found out much to my shock and amazement, they were doing it pretty much the opposite of how our practice was. Hmm. Um, from their perspective, we were hiring completely upside down. And what I mean by that is they started off with um, assessments. There's a whole entire okay. uh, part of psychology called psychometrics that can determine the strengths and talents of a, a person by answering a bunch of questions. Hmm. They used all of these psychometrics to determine if a person would be good at the job or not. Is and, this part of like the advertisement process that this, how, how did they, I think that's one of the things we struggle with a lot is yeah. where do you put that? How do you even get to the point to get to that? Well, in terms of um, from the hiring process, uh, that is after somebody applies okay. for the position. So they, they would uh, take all these candidates who applied, they'd run them through this battery of assessments that was uh, kind of specific to each company. And lo and behold, they would know if a person was good at the job um, as soon as they're done that. Okay. And you know, that's a shocking concept to be able to, I mean, it's like you predicting the future. Yeah. Well, you're not predicting the future. You're simply analyzing what this person is good at. Certainly increasing so, your odds of success. Oh my goodness. Sure. Um, they, they were, uh, it, it's spectacular how effective it is. Mm. And so from there, they would bring people in for an interview. And the interviews okay. only occurred after they knew they could do the job. So they were picking from candidates that were already uh, spectacular. And it, it allows them as part of a process to pick from only A players. Right. Now, you think about that for a second. And you know, contrast that to how our, our practice, and I would argue that most practices... Um, you know, we were doing the hiring before Build My Team took over the, the hiring, mm -hmm. but the, we were looking at resumes. We were looking at resumes. Yeah. We were looking and then interviewing people. We had yeah. absolutely no clue what they're good at right. because um, when they tell you they're good at something in an interview, is it true? Who the heck knows? Mm -hmm. um, the only way you're going to find out is if you hire them and, you know, wait a couple <laughs> months. So. Yep. So what you're or, doing or a couple is days sometimes, yeah, yeah as yeah. the case may be, <laughs> right? So you're you're basically betting five to ten thousand bucks of your practice's money yep. on whether or not this person is telling you the truth. True, there's no way around it through that model. And so what this turned out uh, to be is is a real exercise in frustration because mm -hmm. I knew there was a way to do it and get the results that I wanted. It just mm -hmm. didn't exist for a, a small um, healthcare practice. Right. Um, so, you know, necessity is a mother of invention. I turned around and, and created it. And it it was uh, difficult to say the least. We started out with email and pro tip for all the people listening, do not use email for hiring. <laughs> it is a disaster. In the what capacity are you, times, are you talking about using it? Texting. Uh, sorry, in what capacity yeah. with the email would you say would just as in putting, responding to ads on email or setting up interviews on email is that, the capacity that they should not be using it don't use email at all at all is what i'm okay. what i'm saying the candidates that are applying nowadays um are generally not online using email okay. on a regular basis now every single one of them will tell you yes they they use email yes and they are correct and by their definition on average they check it two to three times a week mm -hmm. Now, how the heck are you going to move at the the at lightning speed for somebody who checks it two to three times a week, which we all know probably means one to two times a, yeah. a week, and and have very um, full inboxes that oftentimes are not sorted or organized in any sense. So we face that yeah. very uh, we face that with team members we did hire that communicating yeah. with them even after they were hired, saying that we'd have to email a form or a legal document <laughs> or something they needed, right. and they're like, you know, it gets kicked back. Sorry, inboxes <laughs> like yeah. okay, we'll just send it to your office email here. Yeah, yeah. And, and contrast that to when was the last time uh, somebody working in one of our practices had 10 unread texts? 
Has that ever great, happened? Great to, point. Uh, yeah. Great point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they would most probably have heart palpitations if they, if they saw. Yeah. I mean, reach yeah. for the anxiety medication. I yeah. had 10 uh, unopened texts on my, uh, my, on my phone. <laughs> so from, from that point, we, uh, we built the, our system using text messages. And um, what that allowed us to do very quickly was uh, create an effective way to communicate with the candidates um, that were applying to our practice. We created an entire battery of assessments. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up going a little overkill on that and removed a bunch, streamlined a bunch, customized mm -hmm. a bunch of it. And now the for our practice, Build My Team does all the hiring. And uh, build my team was essentially created out of this process to help our friend, my friends, mm -hmm. uh, specifically because it was so effective. And you know, when I'll be blunt, when uh, we first started this in our practice, the results that we started to get were fantastic, and I wouldn't shut up about it mm -hmm. because the bar was so low, admittedly, but we were having horrendous results using the resume approach. And now all of a mm -hmm. sudden, we could predict what a person was good at. It, it was fantastic, and now. Build My Team has um, uh, taken that to the point where we're in approximately 40 states uh, plus Canada, eight different healthcare professions, wow. and uh, approximately a 97% success rate on our hires that uh, will stay. In fact, they're guaranteed. The hires are guaranteed for 90 days. And wow. if for any reason they leave, they're replaced for free. It doesn't happen very often at all. That's huge. I mean, hear that. People yeah. hear that again. If, if, they're, if they leave, they're replaced for free. I mean, that's... That's pretty impressive. That's standing behind, especially, I mean, as all of us know, it's hiring, as you said, going back to the early 2000s. And that's when I started my practice. It never was easy, but it definitely got harder. I felt like right or kind of around when you started build my team, that sort of late teens, mid to late teens, just yeah. something started changing in the demographic and uh, that we were trying to pull from. And as you said, we just couldn't reach them the same way. And yeah. we couldn't get the same response rates on things. And then we would think we had one candidate and then they'd come in and you quickly realized even in the orientation process, this was not, as you alluded to, who they said yeah. they were or pretended to be. Uh, and and you just felt like literally you were just kind of blindfolded throwing darts. It was just, I mean, you, right. you'd have maybe down, if you got lucky enough to be down to two or three candidates to pick, I mean, it was just hard to even, I mean, there were times we just hire both because we needed people mm -hmm. and, and we're like, well, hopefully one will work yeah. out. And I mean, if you think about that, the time and the energy and the resources, and I know I'm not alone in that. There are a lot of people listening who can relate to that exact, exact sentiment, uh, but we did it. We did it often. We'd bring a couple in because we're like the time it takes us to go through this. So right. um, talk to me a little bit about what that process looks like. In a couple of moments, we're going to do a, sh a screen share. Uh, so for those of yeah. you who are watching on video on YouTube, you'll be able to see that if you're listening on one of the audio platforms, um, just at this point, you can mark down the time when we do go to video. But before we go to video, uh, I just want you to talk a little bit about what it looks like from the preceding the uh, analytical side of assessing and running those assessments. But how do you even get reach, I should say, how do you even reach talent to to that to get them to apply to your position? And oh boy, what an astute question. Kudos. Um, so how do we do that? Well, the, the process starts with a conversation with the practice owner. Okay. okay. So I'm going to go upstream a little bit on this because okay, yeah, without the, the explanation, it Please. won't necessarily make sense. Um, the discussion with the practice owner is as candid as possible. The more okay. The, they can tell us what's going on in the practice, the better the results are going to be. Okay. Um, our team has seen everything with, you can't believe some of the stuff that happens in practices. Mm -hmm. um, and so that discussion, it's a free consultation with our team members. You hop on a call and uh, what it. they so are So that's step also, one, that consultation. Step you one, actually, yeah. Okay, hop on it. a okay. call. Great. Um, okay. And part of that call is to just determine what the practice, um, you know, how the practice operates, get a bunch of the, the nitty gritty details, like the hours of the practice, the location, okay. multiple locations. Do you need uh, X person here in location one or location two, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. And then another part of it is, is to isolate the type of person you're trying to hire or people. Okay. So a lot of practice owners want a person who can do six things. Well, yep. just picking a number. Well, that's not how that doesn't happen like that. What we're looking for is to have a person who's an A player uh, outstanding at one uh, component of the practice that you're hiring them for, and then okay. a backup role as well. Because let's face it, there's always downtime and A players don't sit around. They're not those types of people. Mm -hmm. So 
that discussion uh, figures out what you, what you're actually looking for in your practice. Okay. And then what our team does is we write the job description and that job description is customized to get the type of people to apply mm. that we want in the first place. Love it, it is okay. tricky. There's okay. all kinds of secret sauce that goes into that. Mm-hmm. Um, once those candidates start to apply, or I'm sorry, once that job description is written, it's posted out to 22 different job yeah, boards. I was going to ask you that. How do you critical. distribute that? Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That's critical because remember, we're um, our engine that we built, our automated process, it's it's upside down relative to what you're used to. We're not looking for the best people. We're rejecting virtually everybody, almost like 97 plus percent, 98%, depending on the role. And the people that are left are the best people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we flip that around. It's a vastly more effective way to do it. Different mindset, but vastly more effective. And so that, that goes out to 22 different job boards and we're encouraging everybody and their dog to apply. The more mm-hmm. people that apply, the better. Yep. Um, now, one of the differences with our approach versus others is we generally, and there are some exceptions to this, we generally aren't looking for people with experience. Okay. Okay. Now that causes uh, uh, heart palpitations mm-hmm. with amongst a bunch of your listeners mm-hmm. for licensed positions. It's obviously different, yep. but for unlicensed positions, that is a vastly superior approach to take. Agree. And 110%. Yeah. When yep. I walk you through what we call our insight report, you'll see why that is a massive risk reducer mm-hmm. and why you get better, faster results using that approach. So, um, so that jobs published to uh, those job, the 22 different job boards. Now, Immediately, as soon as it goes live, the candidates that are applying, they uh, apply via one of the links on the job boards. And within five seconds, and we counted five seconds, their cell phone buzzes with a text message once they apply. Mm. It's that fast. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, why is this guy talking about five seconds? Like, guess what, folks? At 10 seconds, they've already applied for the next job. Yep. Yep. Okay. They don't remember who they're applying for. They do not. That is so it's true. remarkable. They do not. Yeah. yeah. We um, would get, my wife Renee is the one who handled our, our hiring and she would frequently get, now, okay, which office is this? I mean, they they did, it'd be like, hi, this is Renee right. from Duluth Orthodontics. We, you know, pause. We, we, they they don't. You're you're so right. They don't. Yeah, they think you're calling for an appointment, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, they don't have any, uh, where, yeah. what did I applied for? Oh, good. Yep. Okay. Yep. You know, one of those types of responses that are just mm-hmm. ridiculous. So we hit them, their phone immediately with a, uh, a text message, and that encourages them to apply uh, for the the position with links now, in there. I'm assuming they would have the appropriate yeah. links in there. Oh, that's now, so awesome. That's immediately, cool. about a quarter of people do not apply. Terrific. Really? Those are okay, folks. Interesting. Yep, those are a quarter of the people that would guaranteed 100 waste your time in the practice. Yep. Okay, so they're immediately removed um, from the process, and as they go through, and you know, maybe this is a time I can show. Um, yeah, absolutely. I can show the uh, the process that we use. Yeah, go ahead. Do you mind if I share my screen there? Please do. That'd be great. So again, everyone on audio, uh, if you want to mark it down as a time to go back w- or when you are able to hop on the video, the YouTube feed on the, U- the Doc YouTube channel to look um, what we're doing is Mike's going to take us through actually the Build My Team Insight Report that is produced from an applicant. And by the way, if uh, for any reason you're on audio only and you, you can't see this, just give uh, give our team members a call at buildmyteam.com. Um, you can schedule a discussion with them and they'll walk you through this all. So that, that's another way to go about it. Awesome. Thank but you. We, we call this our insight report. And this is the deliverable. This is what's sent over to the practice um, with the finalist candidates. This is not sent over for every uh, person who applies, only the absolute finalist candidates. And the way Can I ask a question right there for a second, Mike? Sure. It, yeah, so from course. that quarter that drops out with those 75% left of that, how do they determine, how does your team determine who gets this, who, whose report comes through to the office? Is that what the, the, all the analysis and the algorithms are doing? Uh, well, uh, imagine a monster funnel, okay? Like a really super wide funnel at the mm-hmm. top and yep. a tiny little... Uh, uh, the the bottom of the funnel at the bottom. That's okay. what we created. Okay. So we want everybody who can possibly uh, imagine themselves working in your office to apply. Yep. And a lot of people who honestly can't, they're going to apply anyway. Yep. Uh, they're not, some of them just don't read the job description. They apply regardless. And that's the the unfortunate truth with regards to this. Yep. So um, what you're seeing on the screen with our insight report, that's 
for the finalist candidates that are sent over to the practice, there'll be uh, two or three of them at the end of this process. And those are the only ones who make it all the way through our funnel. Okay. Remember, we're not trying to find the best people. We are looking to remove every single person we know isn't good at the job mm -hmm. and then streamline the ones left and out of the very bottom of that funnel come the... Uh, the terrific team, uh, potential team members and candidates. Right. Okay. So it starts off with um, listing uh, the name of it. It's an ins insight report, we call it. Lists the position and the location of the practice. And in this particular case, this is a person who applied as a front desk coordinator for our practice in Holly. Lists their name. And then right underneath there, you see the driving time. So that's mm -hmm. 25 minutes for that person to get there. Now, why on earth do we have a little picture of a car in some minutes, <laughs> um, you know, at the, the top of this thing? Well, here's the reality of it. If that person is trying to claim that they are in love with your practice and they're driving 60 minutes to your location, eh -eh. They think fall out of love all, pretty quickly. <laughs> think of all the different places they can earn a living uh, in those 60 minutes. And yep. every time they're driving to your yep. practice and every time they're driving back, they're thinking of that too. Yep. So it has to be a number that makes sense. It's just the nature of a healthcare practice. Is there a number you find that that, that beyond it tends to not succeed or it has to be less than for it to really have the highest chance of success? Well, you know, that all depends on the geography. So let's say your, your uh, commute time would be a mile in New York City. I mean, that's a long ways, right? Yeah. Yep. Now, um, a mile out in rural Pennsylvania in the Poconos, I mean, you could walk there. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it really all depends on, on your geography. Okay. Um, but the practice managers and the practice owners that are looking at these things, they know that number uh, pretty much immediately mm -hmm. as to what works for their particular practice. So the, the top of our funnel, the first thing we do is we're measuring the candidate's mindset. And we okay. created a healthcare mindset tool that determines if they even have a healthcare mindset to begin with. Okay. So we're, we're assessing them for things like, are they results focused and accountable? Mm -hmm. uh, do they like being a team player? Are they grateful and appreciative? Mm -hmm. um, do they have initiative? Do they um, have uh, any type of ability to provide a first-class experience? Mm -hmm. Are they helpful? I mean, are these mm -hmm. people who want to help other people? And you scratch your head and say, well, don't all people who apply to mm -hmm. a, you know, to, <laughs> and just stop right there. The answer is no, <laughs> absolutely not. No. Most no. of them don't. That's the whole problem. And I can That's tell you, you across the board, my best team members had an inherent yeah. desire to be helpful. Uh, and, and whether it's helping another team member, whether it's helping a patient in need, whether it's helping the doctor, I mean, yeah. it, it, they just have that inherent ability to do that. Right. Folks, it's called health care, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's a full stop sentence right there. If the team member that you're trying to bring on doesn't want to care, they mm -hmm. can't be part of your team. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. They will be a disaster mm -hmm. uh, long term. Yep. So um, we're also looking for people with uh, no entitlement. Uh, mm -hmm. I am anaphylactically allergic to entitlement. <laughs> I know you are too, Mike. I'm right um, there with you. <laughs> we, I mean, when when somebody oh. applies and uh, for for my practice, and they think we owe them something other yeah. than a paycheck and treat them incredibly well. Yeah. It's time to get the EpiPen out because I won't have anything to do with that. And yeah. nor will anybody who's built their own practice as well. So the next thing we're looking for are things like, are they reliable? Do they have honesty and integrity? And do they like to learn? The learning's critical because mm -hmm. if they don't like to learn, they're going to wash out of a healthcare practice very quickly. It's very perpetual true. in the practice. So out of the people who uh, take that mindset assessment, um, and this is just, excuse me again for, I started to keep interrupting, but it's yeah. so fascinating. I, I get all these questions that pop up as I'm, as you're going through it. Do they take, um, is this a 10 question? I mean, what, are, what is the applicant going through or seeing for you to get this data? Well, it's all done on their cell phone. And so the way this works is um, um, there, this is a, well, we, without getting into exact detail, this is a way that cannot be gamed is how we measure this mindset. That was it's right. a comparison. You, you, you knew where I was, I was going to go there. That's kind of where I was heading with it, but okay. yeah. 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 So, um, so it's, it's not something that can be gamed, uh, because of how the questions are asked. Okay. Okay. It's not a right or a wrong. It's a comparison. And okay. that gets, it very, very quickly drills into, um, uh, to what type of mindset that they have. Okay. Now, 
So they're just answering these on their, they're literally, they click the link, yep. it pops up and they just say, it, it welcomes them or however it says, says, please answer these questions. They're yep. answering them. They're not really tipped off as to this is going to see how helpful you are. They're just basically answering a series of questions that your team has formulated. Oh yeah. This, this is not a leading question. Okay. Uh, like, like the proverbial uh, leading question on law and order uh, where you tell the witness exactly what you want them to say. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's none of the above. Okay. There's, there's no way to game this from that standpoint okay so the people who um uh, essentially pass that assessment move mm -hmm. to the next one and that's the speed of learning and you have to uh, you have to hit a certain level to pass the mindset assessment and once they do we measure their speed of learning and as you can see on this it's a simple it looks like a protractor yeah um, on the left hand side they learn slowly on the right hand side they learn quickly mm -hmm. and so a lot of folks might say well why don't we want people who learn you know super fast well you don't not in a healthcare practice. Mm -hmm. um, if they learn too quickly, they will rapidly become bored They're and they'll bored. leave your yeah. practice. Yep. Yep. Um, on the other hand, if they learn too slowly, well, there's really no polite way to say this, but you're going to be teaching them the same thing. Your team member will go over with them on Tuesday what you went through on Monday. Yep. And guess what you're doing Wednesday? It's the same thing. Same thing. Right? Yep. You, they're just not going to progress. And so there's a sweet spot for each position um, where the team member performs incredibly well, mm -hmm. stays, and is still challenged in that role. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, um, that's critical. Now, speaking of critical, as we scroll down through here, here are a bunch of things that are, are uh, assessed about the candidate. So for example, um, are they warm and friendly with patients or are they cool and impersonal? Mm -hmm. Now, these are, it's a scale. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no right or wrong for any of these. These are descriptions of the candidates, okay? Because you, you can think in terms of um, uh, different positions are going to require different types of people. So for example, you, you're probably going to want somebody who's really warm and friendly in a pure patient care role, mm -hmm. let's say front desk or a hygienist or things mm -hmm. like that. And on the other hand, if they're behind the scenes, that might not be important at all. Mm -hmm. If they're doing billing, Perhaps it doesn't, you know, that that might work against you in a little bit yep. uh, type thing. Then we're looking to see if they can manage the actions of others. That's terrific to see what their upgrade, uh, their uh, upward mobility is. Mm -hmm. Do they follow procedures and policies constantly or do they make exceptions to procedures and policies? Mm -hmm. Now, think about that for a second. How are you going to get that info out of a, an interview? You're not. I can tell you from having, right. having But tried. here's what you're going to do. You're going to spend a ton of money. You'll hire the person and you'll find out the hard way. They're making exceptions all over the place all day long in your practice. That's a train wreck. It was one, of the, hardest, it was one of the hardest employment situations when you had a team yeah. member who was not following. Because we, we were protocols, systems, processes. Of course. You have to follow this. It's You don't decide you're going to do it this way. If you want to change it, you come to me. We talk about, do we all need to change it? But this is right. the protocol. And there were some people, they resented those protocols. And it, this is where it would hopefully flush that out and say, no, it, this is a person who isn't going to want to follow your protocols. No. And those people aren't moving forward in, um, in these types of positions. So then from there, we go down to different performance factors. Can they handle details and paperwork? Are they not good with details and paperwork? Now, the paperwork in this sense means like the digital side of things recording. So here's a person who can handle details and paperwork. Um, terrific role for a scribe, somebody who's documenting what the, you know, the doc is doing all day mm -hmm. long. Um, underneath that, can they, are they bored by extended routine? Can they handle extended routine? Look, healthcare is all about doing the same thing over and over again, or at least similar things over mm -hmm. and over again. If they can't handle extended routine, that's going to be a tough position mm -hmm. for them to stay in long term. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking at, can they uh, uh, handle detail planning and prioritization? What's their follow-up like? Um, this is one of my pet peeves. A, a team member, uh, let's say one of my scribes or technicians, I'm walking between one exam room to the other, you know, in dental, let's say operatories. If, if you tell them something, I don't expect, um, uh, I don't expect them to come back at the end of the day and say, well, I got 10 out of the 15 things you told me done. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the other five. Could you go mm -hmm. through those with me again? I mean, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. We're going to say something to them 
and it's done unless they say otherwise. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. The mm -hmm. follow-up has to be very high in order to work in those positions um, or else they're just not going to be successful. So again, we know all of this about the candidate um, before they're even going over to your practice. And none of this information, I would argue, you can get from an interview. So we're also looking at things like, can they make decisions or waiting for decisions? On the motivation side of it, uh, this is kind of critical for the culture of the practice. Are they motivated by helping others succeed or do they get motivated by individual success? Mm -hmm. um, a biller, that's a really important position. If they aren't motivated by their individual success, boy, oh boy, you know, um, th th that's a tough, uh, tough position to be in because they have to get up in the morning uh, put their helmet on and go to battle with the, <laughs> yep. the people who uh, need to pay them. Yep. Right. And they need to really get excited about doing a great job themselves. Yeah. Um, some other stuff we're looking for, do they prefer recognition for the team? Uh, is there focus on their own delivery of patient care or uh, is it on the, the patient and their needs? And then we're also looking at things like the working environment. And again, this is how, this is in addition to finding the right candidate for the job, we're looking at finding people who can uh, thrive in your organization and mm -hmm. stay. So that's why our people flat out stay longer than what uh, what folks are used to. So some things there. You take a look at the quick communication um, versus slower communication. I'm obviously talking at a, a cadence that is a little bit faster than some folks. Well, if my team members can't keep up with that, that's a challenge because I have to repeat myself over and over, which again, mm -hmm. on the egotistical doctor side of things in the, the clinic or in the exam room, that's a really frustrating point. Mm -hmm. um, underneath that, do they work best in scheduled environments or without interruptions or can they handle interruptions? Um, <laughs> that's a big one. I know my practice, wonder, that was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, how it, many it, of it, us- it was so fast and so much going on, they had to be able to handle interruptions. Yeah. Right. So how many of your listeners have sat at their front desk in the last year? <laughs> Great question. Yeah. And tried to answer the phone while mom's walking up to me, especially when I, mean, I have a lot of dental, not just orthodontic uh, yeah. listeners, but, but a lot of orthodontists listening and orthodontists, I mean, we'll see 75, hundred patients a day. Um, and that's not, that's not extreme at all. So there, there's a lot going on in a busy orthodontic practice. Yeah. So what I would just as a, as a thought experiment in real life, um, grab a piece of paper and a pen, pretend you're doing something, grab a seat at your front desk and see if you last five minutes. <laughs> and, you know, at somewhere around three to four minutes, your hands are going to start to get sweaty and you say, I got to get out of here yeah. <laughs> because it's overwhelming. Yeah. And you need a person who can uh, work in that environment and then look at the one underneath that. Um, do they, can they handle stress? Mm -hmm. You know, we literally measure how they handle stress. Um, can they handle most type, most levels of stress or can they not handle stress? Mm -hmm. Well, you combine that with the interruptions and um, those two components right there, if those aren't dialed in for a front desk position, that person will leave. Yep. It's a simple matter of time. There's yep. those two things have to be dialed in. Now, there are other aspects of the practice where maybe they're working directly with the patient. Um, they're in an operatory and... Um, you know, that's less important. But as you can tell, each of the different positions have almost an algorithm behind them that sets the team members up for success. I was okay. going to actually ask that too, and, and you might get to this yeah. or so you can answer it in the sequence that works for you. But is it something where you help with that side? So, you know, you had the interview, you know, they're looking for a biller or they're looking for a front desk receptionist. Um, and then based on their answers, your team can say, hey, doc, this because this person scored here, 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 here on these scales, this would be a good person for a biller. Or no, this person thinks they're a biller, but based on their answers, yeah. they're really not a biller. All right, Mike, you hit the nail right on the head. So in our practice, and we never anticipated this in a million years, but about almost exactly 50%, like a coin toss of people who apply for one job don't end up getting that job and are moved into another position within our practice. Interesting. Okay. So the, the key here, and this is, this is a crazy concept, but half the people um, that are applying are applying for the wrong job for right. them. Right. Half. Yeah. And don't know it. Toss. <laughs> right. And they don't know it because they don't know what their, their strengths and talents are. Yeah. And this entire system is based upon strengths and talents. Mm. So, 
we identify what they're naturally good at, put them into a position that they can utilize their strengths and talents. They wake up in the morning, they roll into work. They don't really understand why it's special that they're getting all these amazing results. Mm -hmm. And like, this is pretty cool. I can do this. No problem. Um, and they, they do that day in, day out over and over again. Well, as you can tell from how this uh, is broken down, we know a tremendous amount about them and we can put them in those positions where they are naturally inclined to succeed. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you get that out of an interview? The folks who, um, who hire extremely well um, in a healthcare practice are, are extraordinarily few and far between. It, and some of it, I felt what goes luck. I really did. I felt it was a feel and ever luck forget and, that. And it was, it was yeah. an element of just sort of this, you know, this person feels, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm kind of, you know, being a little hyperbolic we had amazing team and yeah. literally I had an amazing, we had up, upwards of 15, 17 people at one point between full and part timers. Yeah. We had an amazing team. Um, we built, it was great at the same time it was a constant challenge to find the right people to grow that team and to keep on that team and to right. maintain that team. It was a constant challenge. And so many of the things that I'm watching you go through, I'm thinking in my head, all of those times that a team member didn't work out. And I'm like, man, if I had only known that she just was someone who just wouldn't follow protocols, right. I would have saved myself so much time and energy. So to your question of whether or not we ever got an interview, I don't think I can say we did. I think it was, we got a feel, we might've had a sense and we may have guessed right, but it wasn't right. a conclusive, oh, I know I'm honed in on this and this is what I'm getting with this hire. And you think of how, uh, what I just described, how it incredibly stacks the deck for the the success of the practice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. now you're, you're able to dial in. Um, I mean, our team members, again, they do this all day long. They'll flat out tell you, um, as, a, as a client of ours, this type of person who applied would be better in a, you know, a different position. They're a rock star. They're an A player. However, they're not best suited for position A. Let's look at position okay, B, great. et cetera, et cetera. Yep, yep. Um, and then at the, the bottom here, um, what we're showing, these are suggested questions and discussion points for the particular candidates. And you can see how nitty gritty, like these are just incredibly detailed. What hourly income are you hoping to receive? Well, so this person wants 17 bucks an hour. Um, that's terrific. Whatever the number is, it is immaterial. What that does is it immediately, without any emotion attached to it, starts the frame, uh, starts to frame the discussion. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be willing to pay 25 bucks an hour. On the other hand, you might be willing to pay 15 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where that is. Um, what matters is this is what the candidate's looking for. Yep. And it also gives you an opportunity to, um, let's say you're open to paying 19. Great. Split the difference. Our team would suggest you pay 18 bucks. The candidate's ecstatic that you're paying them more than right. what they asked for. Right. You're ecstatic. You're under by a buck an hour and it gives them all kinds of room to grow. Yep. We're also looking at things like, do they want full-time or part-time employment? Mm -hmm. You would be absolutely shocked how many people are looking for part-time even mm -hmm. though they're applying for full-time? Because they well, don't want to be refused work. the position probably by yeah. sitting in front of the interview right. going, well, I don't want to be here all the time, right? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Dr. Mike, I'd like to uh, work with your practice and I'm completely willing to work uh, Tuesday and Thursday between 10 to 2 with a two-hour lunch. <laughs> right. Are you okay with that? Right. Of course not. We're, right. we're not working banker's hours here. We're working like crazy. So we also want to know if they're employed um, why did you leave your previous mm -hmm. job? That that usually elicits a, a terrific discussion point. <laughs> um, what's your commute time? How many years do you plan on living in the area? So for example, I'm a college student. I'm going to be here for the next mm -hmm. three months. Hey, God bless you. We wish you the best of luck. We're not touching this with a 10-foot pole. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you have any prior experience in the field? Well, again, that that is something we look at very closely because a lot of times that can be a red flag for the practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Agreed. But it, ha it has to, our system is automated and anybody with experience goes uh, through basically a manual review within our, our process. Um, and then in an employment setting, how many employees are you used to working with? Uh, if you were hired, when could you start? Which is usually a huge question because most practices want somebody right now. Mm -hmm. And then, um, the, the bottom question there is kind of fascinating. Here's our office. It's open mm -hmm. the following hours mm -hmm. and days. Um, are there any t days or times that you're unable to work? Okay. Now, I'm really, 
it's really unfortunate that your brother's sister's uh, cousin's goldfish died and you have mm -hmm. a recurring funeral to go to and you can't get a babysitter to go to that funeral um, and you just won't be able to come in on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? We're open Wednesdays, you know? Yeah. And is that a uh, an unrealistic request that we want you to work the days that we're open? Absolutely not. Um, but in an interview and through that entire process, you will run into all kinds of problems with that, especially with the childcare side of things. So it doesn't matter why they can't come to work. Your practice requires those hours to be filled by this position. And so that type of person who can't meet those requirements is automatically eliminated from this process. You know, what's so fascinating and, about this as you're, excuse me, as you're talking about this is and what you're saying, I think there's a lot of practices out there. Again, I, I'll in a moment speak to my, my own experience uh, in my practice, but that are doing parts of this some are doing personality inventory. So I, yep. we, we've done, we've done that. Some are doing um, phone interviews. Like we, what we evolved to is we decided that if we waited until they came in and then asked them all these questions on the spot, it was tough to get answers or figure out what they were saying. They weren't filling out the forms. We'd send them an interview form ahead of time. All of those things were, were, were not super successful. So right. what Renee started doing is she would do the, almost literally, I'm looking at these questions. They're almost exactly the questions mm -hmm. on her phone interview sheet. But he, it's such a different world today that I love yeah. that this is something they do on their time from their phone, which is what they're doing most if we're trying, especially if we're trying to hire younger people, but even a lot of the middle-aged people now, we were, we're, tended, we're tied to those phones. Yeah. I, it was hard to even sometimes coordinate the time to coordinate to do a, and I literally mean coordinate to coordinate an interview right. by phone. I mean, it was those things were just arduous and there was so much time and energy that went into them and then playing schedules and then you call them and their child is, you know, having an emergency. I mean, all of these yeah. things that I think one of the parts about this that's so genius is the way you're getting this information and how you're filtering this down. Like you said, I love that funnel analogy, right? You're, yes, we might be doing a lot of the things in that funnel, but you're able to literally complete it and funnel it down to get an ideal applicant is what stands out to me as being different from what we did. Yeah. And about, um, about 80% of the people who um, apply do not get to the point that you're seeing right now. Yeah. Okay. Right, they, right. they wash out of the right. application. Whereas process. we started there, we basically, this was like the beginning. Yeah. Right. So we just removed, um, 80% of the people who would waste the practices time because yep. they're unhireable. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whether you, whether you, you might hire them by mistake, uh, or accidentally, but they're gone out of your practice. Yep. So think of the time and money that that saves. Oh, it's huge. Now, next thing is you've got, we've got a check step that's built into this. There's one more level past this and it's a, a video interview. So the finalists or the, the terrific candidates that go through this process and they make it all the way through, um, our software will, uh, will select them for a video interview and it's a one way video interview, which is a little different. Um, it's sent to them and the candidates that are sent those video interviews, uh, our current statistics is that 95% of the people sent those video interviews, complete mm -hmm. them. Wow. Now you think in terms of the number of people you've asked to come in for an interview to your practice, there's no practice in the world that uh, no. gets 95% of them to do that. No. And we do, um, they're able to do it on their own time. And what the video interview shows us is not, um, it's not so much the answers to the questions that's okay. secondary. It's how they're answering the questions. Okay. It tells us a tremendous amount about the person in terms of, you know, are they dressed uh, for an interview? Do they mm -hmm. look fantastic in their interview? Um, do they have, uh, are they taking this seriously? Are they giving eloquent responses? Mm -hmm. Are they, uh, you know, the, all of that stuff, our team gets to to review and study. Okay. And then when that's all said and done, the two or three finalist candidates that pass that, the top people are sent to the practice for uh, for an interview. So out of every single person who applies through this process, the practice only has to deal with two to three of them. Hmm. The rest uh, are team processes for the our clients. And so what that translates to is a practice can hire a team member, an A player team member with no more work than about an hour. Mm -hmm. Now, some and can is that take what they do after. That. So once you get those two or three, is yeah. that when you would recommend an in-office visit or is that? Yep. We okay. have clients where uh, they say, you guys pick the best one, send them over. 
and uh, they can start Thursday. We have clients who do okay. that. Okay. Um, those are the ones that work have worked with us for a while generally and, and realize the not only the time savings, the cost savings, but the effectiveness at of uh, our process. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, most of the clients want to interview in person, so they mm -hmm. bring the person in, and you know sometimes that's um, useful for for uh, discussions about job A versus job B that they okay. might yep. want. So yep. there's all kinds of ways to do it. Um, now some some general concepts here is that uh, out of everybody who applies um our entire system takes about 20 to with a video interview it's closer to about 30 minutes from the client or the, the candidate side of things okay they can do it at three in the morning and we have all kinds of people who do in the middle of say the you night. probably have that you know when it comes yeah. through so yeah this yeah. these applicants they apply all over the like evenings uh late at night early in the mornings generally mm -hmm. outside of work hours if they're working mm -hmm. but the other part of it is that it is extraordinarily fast. And what I mean by that is the entire process is streamlined to the point of, of bordering on ridiculousness because the A players move on. If we're yeah. not um if if we're not decisive, if we're not showing the A players that we're organized, that we have mm -hmm. our act together, mm -hmm. they're yeah, gone. So they true. want nothing to do. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. They want nothing to do with. Uh, indecisiveness oh maybe you know let me talk to blah 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 right, we'll get back right. to you in a week or two right no way yep. they're no, gone uh, i completely i completely agree now through this process when you said they drop out are there just points at which you just say thank you very much we'll contact you if you're interested type of, i mean how does that drop off process oh, go uh, through that funnel we have a they uh they exit our process in a very gentle nice way okay and and uh, it depends on where they're at through that process um but we have that set up where where it's it's just incredibly gentle okay. and um, uh, they just exit the process. Okay. So from that perspective, we can take, um, you know, some positions can have hundreds of candidates down to three. Mm. The practice has no wasted time or no wasted effort or, or money throughout that entire process. And what we've been able to demonstrate, a couple of financial numbers, um, we did a study in our practice. If we hired somebody and fired them on the 14th day, the fastest we could possibly imagine, um, you know, barring some craziness, but but figuring out if a person was good at the job or not, this mm -hmm. was before Build My Team, it would cost us about $4,500, absolute mm -hmm. minimum. I think in what, uh, you know, on the ortho side of things is probably more expensive than that. That'd be low, would've been low for me, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And so um, our, our, uh, our pricing model, we have two different options. We have a membership model and we have a one-time hire okay. that allows practices to either do this where, where our team members do the hiring for the, or do the selection, I should say, for the practices. Mm -hmm. Or we have some practices just want to hire, um, you know, one or two people a year. And so both of those are options. It's kept very simple. Yeah. Um, extremely affordable process. And um, that's something that is, it, it's to the point where, you know, in my practice, I know that I'm wearing both hats here. I could not ever imagine going back to the old route of sitting in an interview and trying by the grace of God and all things holy to figure out what this person is actually good at and how they're going to contribute to our practice. Mm -hmm. um, we, with the amount of data we have about them now using the insight report and the rest of it, um, and the video interviews, it, it's, uh, there's no guessing. We just don't guess much at all. Mm -hmm. And that's, so when we started this conversation, I said that these positions are guaranteed for 90 days and the person can be replaced for any reason. The reason that our company is able to do that is because it's very, it's almost never used. Mm -hmm. So some examples of when that's used is if uh, a spouse moves, changes mm -hmm. jobs, mm -hmm. they got to move out of the area, you know, things like that. That doesn't matter. We replace them for free. Mm -hmm. And that's great that you, you stand behind that clearly it, it works and it's been successful. So on the billing side too. So just to clarify, you're not a lot of recruitment agencies they're doing where they're taking a portion of the hourly pay prorated over a period. No, 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 that, no, that's no. not that. This is a fee nope. for service to find yep. one offs or you could be a subscriber and member to the yeah, it's a fixed fee. My team platform. Doesn't matter what the position is, it's a fixed fee. Right. Um it's easy. And that's that's again one of the things that our clients um Give, give us feedback on it's just we try and keep it as easy as humanly possible look there's nobody who's a practice owner or a practice manager who is sitting around in a practice saying boy i'm bored today 
I wish I had more to do. Yeah. Has that ever happened? No. (laughs) (laughs) Nope. Right. So it's 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 like, oh my gosh, how is it almost six o'clock? I have, I have a million things I've got to still do. Yeah, exactly. And you know, um, now you're just remembering you didn't eat lunch that day. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Very true. Yeah. So what we've tried to do is create a, an entire company that solves one problem exceptionally, exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And that's to find a players for the different positions in a private practice uh, in North America. And that's what we believe we've been able to do. And it also gets better and better because the, the more clients we get and the more positions we fill, the more feedback we get, yeah. the tighter the algorithms get, I was, the yeah, more I was successful ask how we you, are. Do you have to literally manually make those improvements? Is the software smart enough that as you input some data points, it's able to just naturally adjust those algorithms for you so that it gets tighter and tighter? Well, to give you an example, on the back end, and this isn't client facing, but uh, what our team uses, the, the people that uh, pass and go all the way through our process successfully, yeah. our software gives a thumbs up. Okay. That's it. That is the indicator. Okay. So when they get a thumbs up, they move on to the video interview side of things. And then our team members re- manually review those video interviews uh, for obvious reasons. But uh, that's how uh, um, automated uh, the process is. I mean, thumbs up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and the simplification is really, really admirable. And in someone who has built systems and businesses, I know that this just doesn't happen. <laughs> so kudos to you and your wife and your team for for creating something that is uh, oh, front-facing, aesthetic. It's, it's simple. It's streamlined. Um, and it's something that I, I think really touches, not I think, I know it touches everybody who has any role. Even if you're an associate in a practice, working in a practice, you could have your, you know, your boss when hiring is a challenge that we all face. And I mean, you can't Mm -hmm. go to a dental meeting or sure it's the same in optometry and the other professions. Uh, You can't go to a meeting or talk to a colleague without people venting about a a, a significant issue with staff. Uh, I'm old enough to remember where the days in the beginning, when I started my practice, you probably had the same where, I mean, you put a little, little ad in the paper uh, for, you know, a dental receptionist or uh, orthodontic assistant. And and that was it with a phone number. Um, It has changed so much. And we don't learn this. We don't learn how to hire, at least in dental. I don't, I can't speak for the other professions. We don't learn. uh, None of the healthcare professions do. Of course, no not. idea. We don't learn how right. to do. We were all doing it on the fly. And even when I found we did things like personality assessments and um, the Wonderlick and trying to do some of those mm-hmm. things, it was hard for us to even interpret the data in a way that was meaningful. You know, we could sense right. certain things, but okay, what does that mean for someone who's applying for a front reception position? Yeah. And, and more to that, um, imagine an orchestra. So, each of these different tests, you know, the assessment is an instrument in the orchestra. And you can, and we started out this way. I mean, there is no one assessment that'll, that'll pull this off for a, a private practice. Yep. We look at them. I wish there were, but there isn't. Um, so we've had to take these, uh, some, you know, take what we built, string them together and get them in a in a funnel because it's the funnel funnel yeah um, and the the texting the automation the speed i love that part of the, it yeah. the uh I mean, without the automation if you were to do this manually uh our same process without the automation it would not be successful yeah because the a players are gone right you're Meaning just not if they reply to the first enough. part you have to analyze the data see if they're ready for the second part get that back to them then yeah they're I, gone yeah gone like i i I think that's something we need to talk about more within our company, but the, the, the people worth hiring are long gone yeah. because you can't move fast enough. Yep. Um, and on the other hand, imagine the, the advantage this gives you versus another practice because you have your act together so incredibly well that an A player can apply with your practice and get a decisive um, um you know, outcome with moving forward with you while the other practice is still twiddling their thumbs, trying to figure out why their printer won't print the resume uh, that that person just applied with. And what I find too, in, in my years of practice, when you lose someone, everything in your workload gets ramped up at that point, right? Because, you know, emotionally, you've got to keep your team, 
okay, positive, Ugh, whether you had to fire awful. the person or, you know, you had, whether yeah. they chose to leave, you've got to kind of gather everybody. And, and then you've got to redelegate that person's roles. And we had checklists and everyone had assigned responsibilities, but now the other yeah. team members need to pick up that team members checklist items. So you're super busy and stressed at that time anyway. And I know what got Renee and I the most was the thought of, oh God, now we got to start the hiring process again. Yeah. And we were all, so we got to the point where we were like basically always hiring. We, we kind of just always were going through that process to try to have, but then that's not necessarily good either because then you got ads right. out there all the time and it's looking like, yep. why is this place always trying to hire people? So I think it's not discussed enough, just the impact that that person leaving has on a practice emotionally, not just mechanically and what they do day in and day out. That's relevant and important. The emotional side of that. So if you can just minimize that by even, you know, probably sounds like you could more, but even 10, 20% of yep. what you go through uh, in a given, say, three, five year period. And then on top of that, have higher performers there who are enjoying their job, who are fulfilled and who are building other people up. That's I know when my team was running the best was when we had a group of people who all cared about what we were doing and wanted to be there and were doing it for the right reasons. And if you can sort that out in a streamlined fashion, when you are the busiest and most stressed and don't have the time maybe to get back to that. I know we lost a people over the years because we just were so busy trying to put the pieces together that we couldn't get through the hiring process fast enough. We'd have someone come through that seemed really good. And by the time we could get them in or do the phone interview and so forth, it was, it was maybe that person had taken another, another position. So the, I think that's exactly. something that is so valuable about what you're doing is the, the streamlining it. Yes. But the efficiency the speed with which it happens and the fact that it is on their phones, <laughs> which well, just... exactly. And you know, you bring up two points um, that uh, wanted to touch on one, the concept of the A players. So when you you mentioned how your team, uh, when somebody would leave, they would have extra work that they would have to do. Um, and a player will, they, all they want to work with are a players. Mm -hmm. they'll tolerate B players in a practice, but they'll quit because of C players. Interesting. So I'll flip that around on, on what you said. If a C player leaves the practice in, in what you were just saying, they would voluntarily take over the additional work that person was doing because they don't have to deal with a boat anchor uh, employee anymore. Mm -hmm. That's how they look at those people, mm -hmm. a, a C player. So you can take, you can trim your practice uh, staff wise, removing those types of folks, and you will see a net increase in productivity, even though the number of people has been yep. reduced in your practice. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. I was more, yeah. uh, well, I guess two things on that. One, if you lose the C, if you lose the C player and you can't get someone in there in a reasonable amount of time, the A players yeah. start to get a little battle weary because again, in the practice I was moving as of fast course. as mine that yep. extra five tasks at the morning and five tasks in the afternoon. So I did notice, yeah. I, I completely agree with you. If that person was, there was a, a relief that they were gone. But then when the, after the first couple of weeks, honestly, with a players, you're so right for like two to four weeks, morale's actually up there because that, that anchor's not there. But I would notice that about a month, if you haven't found anybody yet, those a players start to feel like, Oh my gosh, like I, now these are my tasks and I want right. to do it, but this is getting exhausting. It's getting really hard. So again, the speed with which you can replace that person. And then sometimes you'd bring a person in and everyone listening mm -hmm. has probably been there too. You bring a person in, you know, you need someone to come in. Yeah. You put them in that position, you start training them. And a couple of weeks in, you realize that you start to you know, redelegate tasks away from the others to that person. And then you realize that's not the right person. And that ends. And then it all goes back to everybody. And those are the cycles we've all been in. And, and that's man, a cascade painful. effect. It's yeah. So like painful. it's a full, a full cascade effect on your team. So yeah. there's, there's an advantage. Um, there's two real things that build my team provides to solve that type of situation as much as it can possibly be solved. Mm -hmm. And that's a concept we call talent certainty. Okay. So you own the practice and somebody leaves. Well, when that happens in our practice, and no matter what happens, by the way, people will leave your practice. Yeah, it's inevitable. Nothing yeah. that can be done about yeah. that. Minimizing it is the goal, but it'll, it'll still happen. Yep. So when somebody uh, gives their notice within our practice, I don't have heart palpitations anymore. My blood pressure doesn't <laughs> go through the roof. I'm not thinking all of the things that you were mm -hmm. um, because Build My Team handles that for us. And all we do, like I, I personally have nothing to do with it, but our team members will reach out to Build My Team and say, we need this position, et cetera. Now, that is an opportunity. 
Now, this is going to sound really weird, but it's an opportunity to upgrade. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. person that's leaving your practice, here are all the things we loved about them. Here are, all the, well, here are the couple of things we didn't love about them. Mm -hmm. Let's try and find somebody that has all the love that we're, we're missing yeah. and solves the problems of the couple of things that drove us nuts about the person. Yep. So we can upgrade to the type of person with a lot less drive you nuts and a whole bunch more things you love. And that gets to the point where you get some really fantastic fits for your team. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, because yeah. you're learning the whole time. I mean, it's not an overnight, but year after year of starting to put these systems into place, you right. start to build, you drop some of those anchors, cut some of those anchors free, and then yep. and then you start to build up. Now, do you find there's practices who once they've experienced the services with Build My Team, they start to recruit people and then be able to strategically drop, cut some of those anchors free and build a better team, not just going to you when they yeah. need to grow their team, but saying, Hey, I got a, I don't want more people. Maybe I've got eight people in my practice. I really don't want more right now, but I got a couple I would like to proactively replace. Do you see that when then they can strategically get some replacements? Oh, well, story time for you here, Mike, if, if that's okay. So <laughs> yeah, let's finish this, up with a couple. I would, why don't we do that? Let's kind of wind yeah, down with a couple um, great, good stories. I love that. So Remember the concept of talent certainty for in our world is that the practice owner um, knows that within a reasonable period of time, they can bring in the talent that they need. It's a certainty that we'll be able to fill the positions with great people. Yep. And so when you have that level of certainty, you run your practice differently. Yeah. You don't yeah. wake up in the morning fearful. You don't yep. get the night sweats, the cold yep. sweats, the, yep. the sweat, the sweats period. Yep. You're able to enjoy yourself and, and have a dramatically different level of stress. And I am speaking from experience. <laughs> my, uh, with, with build my team handling our hiring at the practice, my stress level has plummeted. I'm not joking. It's got to be over 90%. There's no way to measure it, of course, right. but I enjoy going to work now. And that's the biggest getting, measure, I think, for people like us that oh, want to practice. You enjoy you know, it. Yeah. 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 Because you're in, as an owner of a practice, you're trapped. Yeah. You're not going anywhere. I mean, you have financial commitments, you got loans out the wazoo, you got leases, you have all of these yeah. commitments to your team members. You are stuck, as stuck as stuck gets. Yep. And so the only way to make your average day better is to change the team members. And to get to your point, um, Frank Tuffy, he's our operations manager for Build My Team. Uh, okay. And he also uh, oversees our practice. He's not the practice manager, he oversees our practice manager and the team. Okay. So he comes from a, a background of 30 years of uh, corporate operations experience, does not um, look at a healthcare practice as anything other than a business. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in the service business, but it is a business. Mm -hmm. And so one day um, uh, I see he's working on a spreadsheet with a bunch of colors on it, which is kind of odd. So I asked him about it. It was a traffic light. That's what it, he listed the team members. And this is really something else. Listed all the team members in the practice, green, yellow, red. Now, guess what happens if you were on the if you on were the, red? Uh -huh. Yeah, yep. you're not working in your strengths. You're terrible yep. at the job. Yep. And what he did immediately um, was uh, take a look at the the folks who were in the red or the yellow. Well, the red people they got replaced. Now, this is in your this is in yours and your wife's practice. Our practice. Yeah. Yep. We uh, we replaced all but two of our team members. Wow. Uh, using the build my team approach. Wow. I am speaking from as much experience as any practice has ever had with that. Wow. The red people uh, were replaced and then the yellow people started to get replaced. Mm -hmm. And what we noticed is that we dropped our head count. Um, this, oh, this is an accurate statement. It sounds a little unbelievable. Our head count team members went down by 40% and our net wow. income more than doubled. Wow. And you say, wow. this guy is full of crap. Nope. Um, happy and to have further stressed, discussions. It wasn't like you just had people out the door and were just pumping through volume that, you know, was no, over no, no. your capacity. We, it was the, it was comfortable well, the gross stuff. income went up too. Our volume went up with fewer yep. people. Uh, it was vastly, uh, it's, it is vastly more, uh, um, fun to be there. Yep. 
and measured by things like patient compliments, the reviews, the joking, the laughing with team members. Oh, you can tell when you, I mean, when, when you're running a practice, you yeah. just, you know, and it, you maybe can't even quantify it. Yeah. You, the quantifiers you're giving are certainly valid, but there's just a, beyond that, there's that gut feeling when you're driving yeah. to the office and when you're leaving that, you know, exactly. you've got a good group there. And when you don't, you also know it. Well, I'll tell you what, we went through a phase where one of our team members just got really excited about uh, scaring another team member. So she'd come around a corner and she'd go, boo. Mm. And the other team member would like screech at the top of her lungs and the entire office would crack up. Absolutely ridiculous. Mm. But they were doing it. They were having fun mm -hmm. at work. Like you remember what having fun at work used to be like? <laughs> yep. Um, yep. I mean, that's, that's what we've been able to accomplish. So I know this sounds uh, just completely... Uh, a little bit beyond believability. I'm telling you the story of how our our practice transitioned, um, how the 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 proverbial sausage was made for mm -hmm. that transition, how it all worked. It took a, uh, about two years from start to finish for that to occur, and now we are in a phase of our practice where we're we're maintaining the uh, the terrificness, the awesome mm -hmm. sauce, if you will, mm -hmm. to to use one of those terms, um, and we're. We're basically, uh, we've got an associate. She's laughing throughout the day. That's great. Um, it's a great place to work because of the team members. Yep. That's what's changed everything. Yep. Yep. It, and it is, it's, it's the rising tide that lifts all ships, right? I mean, when you have exactly. those pl people lifting each other up and that's what we all want on our team is we want people that are going to lift others up, including our patients. Right. Um, and it's so hard to find, but I mean, I, you're, uh, um, I guess mantra could say your vision statement of, yeah. of better people faster, I think is really pretty, pretty, pretty well, well, well phrased because ultimately getting good people, a players and getting them efficiently and quickly is just not an easy thing to do. It's just not, it's just not. And it sounds like you, you guys have really put something forward that, that really helps well, with that. Yeah. Thank you. And it's not just a marketing statement. What, when I walk you through the process, the entire company is one big, fat, incredibly automated, streamlined system and process. Mm -hmm. That's how we're able to deliver these results. Yep. The same concept as um, you know, you teaching the orthodontic side of things, that incredible sleep apnea stuff that you're doing, you've mm -hmm. systematized it, you've created a process where mm -hmm. you can disseminate that information to, to, um, you know, to other docs and they go forth in their own practices and they accomplish it. Yep. That's what we're doing. So yep. this isn't magic. It's not, um, uh, we're able to do this repetitively throughout all the different healthcare practices throughout the country because of one thing we're doing the same thing over and mm -hmm. over and over yep. again in an incredibly specific automated fashion mm -hmm. and that's how those results get delivered and honestly I, like a, a private practice just can't touch um this level of effectiveness because mm -hmm. not because you're not wonderful people it's because you don't have the systems and processes mm -hmm. put together in an automated fashion that's well, the where time the advantage to take is. all those systems and processes and, and implement yeah. them i mean across one-offs to just try to one-off that stuff is, yep. is just so onerous and yeah it's it's impossible it's not i should say impossible but, but highly unlikely that someone in a busy practice is even with a, yep. the best office manager out there that you're going to be able to to pull something like that off with predictability yeah have have um you know call our team members have them do the work for you you pick the final people and instead of spending all of that wasted time with these uh, interviews and these candidates over and over again, spend it on growing the practice, spending on growing the net income. Um, I mean, that's where a terrific practice manager needs to focus their time, yep. but they can never get there yep. because of so these true. issues. So true. It's, it is, it's, it's the conundrum, right? You, you, you want to try to get there, but you can't because you're so bogged down by the issues that are holding you. Yeah holding you back. So, uh, no, that's yeah, awesome. And, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. you know, th those types of issues, um, you don't get there because you're fighting fires all day long. You know, wait, it's only when the, the firefighting stops, do you get to do the great stuff for the growth of the practice. And unfortunately in, uh, you know, in a healthcare practice in America, the firefighting with HR hiring team members, um, that the amount of time that it takes is monumental. And I think a lot of practice owners don't have an, uh, a realistic understanding of how much the practice managers are are going through with regards to that mm -hmm. but that's where our automation comes in yeah and that just simply removes it 
so many things you say that make me think about it even more and just the advantage of it. But what if your practice manager doesn't share the same vision that you have for a team member? It removes that ambiguity, right? I mean, you can try to instill oh, yeah. your values in the office manager, but at the end of the day, he or she is a human who's going to apply their own yeah. values and perceptions and experiences to this application process. And it might not yeah. be what you want. And I've heard all sorts of stories of that over the years and and know of that well. So um, no, that's that's great. I mean, what, what's the best way for people to reach you? Is it just buildmyteam.com? What is yep. the, okay. You can go to buildmyteam.com, schedule a consultation. Um, it's all done um, via schedule calls great. so that it's nice and convenient for folks. And the, uh, you know, to, to your last point there, our system removes the emotion mm. behind it. Yeah. And that's critical. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really touch yeah. on that, but you know, your practice manager has strong emotions. You have strong yeah. emotions. We're all humans. Yep. What this does is it completely removes the emotion down to the finalist candidates that you see where, um, where you really can't make a bad decision. You could go eeny, meeny, miny, mo out of the people our team sends you and still make a, a terrific decision hiring wise. Yeah. And on the emotional side, not only does the person doing the hiring have emotions, but the applicant has emotions. And sometimes yeah. their emotions can influence the people doing the hiring in, in ways that, again, all being human, there can be a story they tell or something they go through. Manipulation. Yes. And then you find yourself manipulated by it. Whereas, I, you know, this, you don't even see them. They get, this is, this is yeah. much more objective that way. And, and again, I, yeah. we could talk stories I, forever. I'm sure you, you, you hear so many docs who just could go on and on about the successes and the failures. And I think we all know what makes, I should say, most of us would be able to say, this makes a great team member, This these trades don't in certain roles. But finding them and finding that person that walks in the door that responds to an ad and figuring out if that person could get into that spot and if they would do well in that spot is the part where is just so hard and and that's where to have help and that's why when i was looking into your product and we started talking like this is really cool and i'm i'm a systems yeah, guy thanks. anyway i love automation yep. like that and and i love that you're removing the emotion from it because i know we made emotional decisions over the years in hiring and sometimes you get lucky and it works and, and other times not so much so um yeah. you know, it's 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 great it's been great well docs you know we're all designed to help people right and so when yes. somebody's in an yes. interview sitting across from you begging it's for so your true. help so how do you say no to that yeah right yeah. that's what we do for a living is help folks Yep. And yet that type of approach in a hiring scenario will only result in outcomes that are atrocious. That's, That's the only point. Uh, you're just not point. going to find uh, superstar performers in that type of position. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Right. We're and not we wired like CEO. We are CEOs, but we're not. We went into healthcare. We didn't go to run a, a, a big company where you just have right. to realize that that's just something you don't even really have to think twice about. This person's not meeting these expectations. They're gone. Uh, we, right. Not a lot of us think that way. Some do. And some of those people go on to build mega practices and have multiple mm -hmm. offices. But a lot of us, especially the ones that run one or two locations and kind of have a small shop, we're super passionate about our patient care and the services we deliver. We're really not wired that way, the way of the, the CEO right. mindset. We might be very good business people, but that, that sort of CEO unemotional, it's about the bottom line only, we're helpers. We went into this to help people. And I know I've yep. been swayed by emotionals in interviews before. So, um, you know, like learning from my own mistakes and seeing some of these things I could have done differently. It's, yeah, it's refreshing. To well, see it. you know, the better the doctor, the more you're going to get swayed by that. The more empathetic you are, the more you're going to get manipulated in an interview. That's mm -hmm. why it's so critical that you're not involved in that at all mm -hmm. and that the, the emotions removed from it. That's how you really get terrific results when you combine that with the, the, selection of the candidates based upon the strengths and talents. It, it, it all multiplies. That's so well said. I'm going to actually, I want that to be the, the end of, of, <laughs> of how we do, because that is perfectly encapsulated and said, Thank and I'm, I love that part that, that the doctor shouldn't be involved because a lot of us have such emotional uh, a, yeah. a tendency towards emotions that can get the better of us in a hiring and hiring mm -hmm. process. So, well, thank you so much for being a part of it, thank for creating you, this. Uh, no, it's been really, really great. Dr. Mike Neal, um, buildmyteam.com. Check it out. Again, I have no personal affiliation other than I just, I, I really like what you're doing and I think it's really awesome. And I hope it can help some of the doc podcast audience and, and the doc community to, uh, to maybe, maybe get some answers in some areas they're struggling in the employment side of things. Terrific. Awesome. Happy to help. No. Thanks so much. Great talking with you. Thank you. All right. Take care. 
Thank you for watching this episode of the Doc Podcast. Be sure to visit theorthocoach.com to get access to ADA SERP recognized CE courses or to schedule a private one-on-one coaching session with me. And remember to join the Doc community on Facebook for more great content designed to help you succeed both personally and professionally. Just go to Facebook, search for the Doc community, and request admission into the group. You can also find Doc on Instagram at at the ortho coach. And always remember, you have been blessed with the ability to do amazing things.